Good morning everybody. So welcome today for the first session about basic pharmacology with the module code NMT042029. The module has the number of 10 credits which is the fourth one in this semester. The first one is clinical nursing with 20 credits followed by theories, nursing practice and uh, disaster and emergency preparedness which both have 13 credits then the basic pharmacology with 10 credits. So this is one of the important course in this semester so you have to perform it well to have the good GPA. We shall have the total number of 18 sessions and our teaching method will include lectures, tutorials, uh, video lectures, seminars and you will be back together with clinical presentation. Assignment is together with the quiz will be done through the e-learning system, presentation, group discussion, practice skills lab and demonstration when you will be back maybe after the COVID-19 pandemic control. So the model assessment is the same as the two other modules. Just you have the continual assessment with 40 marks with the end of semester examination with 60%. So Continuous assessment will include written test with 20 marks or 6, 10 marks assignment. This will include also quiz, 5 marks, and the procedure book with 5 marks. So end of sense, we have written exam together with the practical exam with 30% each, which makes the total of 100%. So the grading system... It is just the same as the last semester with A grade, which I recommend to you all, 80 to 100 percent. But if you fail to get it, at least you have to get the B grade. So the C grade has the satisfactory, the pass one. But if you get the 50, this will be the failure, and you have to supplement the module. So. This is the first session today. We shall discuss on the introduction of the course, introduction of the module, which is basic pharmacology, session number one. Yes, I'm Wabel Tobias. I think you have been to guess on the last semester on anatomy and physiology. So I think you know my principles. So we shall go together also to the whole. To this oral module. The objective we will have to look on the basic terminologies, different forms of drug preparation or drug forms, different sources of drugs, name of available drugs together with the drug bioavailability. So starting with the, the terminologies, we call them definitions. So we have a pharmacology. It is the study of drug interaction in the living cell or in the living cell of the human being. So when a person takes a drug, when either he is sick or to prevent some illness, when he is at risk of some drugs, is at risk of some diseases, so you have to take drugs so that drugs it go and in the body and metabolized by body cells. So in how the interaction of that drug and the body and the living cells is what is known as pharmacology. We have what is the important term pharmacokinetics is a sub drug movement. So it in, includes all the way the body handles the drug from which that is delicious to from administration to elimination when the drug is taken into the body. 
so it undergo different process until it is eliminated so after administration it goes and metabolized into the body absorbed then it is removed so in this oral process the drug takes place in the human body it is known as a pharmacokinetics we have also another important term pharmacodynamics it is a study of mechanism or action of drug and other by biochemical and physiological effect so how the body act within the body mm -hmm. the mechanism of action of the drug in the human body what is known as the pharmacodynamics when you take a drug maybe anti pain and pain drug so in the body it undergo different processes to prevent now that pain to to make you free from pain so those mechanism which undergo it what is known as pharmacodynamics we have also another term known as therapeutics it is a science of art of dealing and treatment of disease in light of pharmacological action so therapeutic that means the treatment so it's a science dealing with the treatment but using the knowledge of pharmacology we have also another important terminology which is side effect so side effect are the effect of drug rather than the intended one when you take drug you intend the the required effect maybe you are taking the drug to control pain so to control pain is a desired effect but sometimes you take that drug to control pain but it also causes other, other effects like body weaknesses dizziness so those are unintended like body weakness and dizziness as the ones that are called the side effect so the effect of the drug but they are not intended Other terminologies include hypersensitivity. So hypersensitivity is the drug reaction of, of an individual. Allergic reaction of the drug to the individual is that is known as hypersensitivity. Tolerance. Tolerance is the decreased response to drug even in increased dose. Sometimes a person may be taking a drug, maybe at the beginning it has a desired effect. Maybe you are taking a drug, maybe paracetamol to control pain. It brings the effect of that pain. But sometimes you take the drug, you don't feel any changes. The pain remains there. So even if you increase the dose, you don't feel any effect of the drug. So that is what is known as tolerance. So a decreased response of the drug. Habituation. Is a desire to continue to take a drug in increased dose. So some drugs have addiction reaction to the body. So some of the some of the drug we shall discuss in this module. Most of the drug with addictive effect. A person may take a drug and will it to take it in an increased for most of the drugs that may be the narcotics like pethidine tramado morphine this is a drug with the addiction so a person may desire to take them at any time when you take the, 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 the drug you feel the pressure so this is known as a habituation another important term is drug drug is any substance used for diagnosis cure or relief treatment or prevention of disease in human and animals so any substance taken for this purpose is, is a diagnosis cure relief treatment or prevention of diseases so very important to note this so we have the minimum dose maximum dose and therapeutic dose so minimum dose is the smallest dose giving effect. So these drugs have different doses. For example, you may take a drug that is, most of the drugs have the range of doses. Maybe for example, I take the example of paracetamol, one of the common drugs. 
Maybe the common dosing form taken is 5 mg to 1 gram. So when we say 5 mg, this is the minimum dose, the smallest dose that a person may take and it brings the desired effect. So when you take the minimum amount of drug and you have the desired effect, we call it the minimum dose. But when you take the maximum, for example, for paracetamol, if you take that one gram of PCM, which we regard as the highest dose. So and you bring that effect without causing other side effect. So we call it the maximum dose. But a therapeutic dose is a dose between maximum and minimum so between that maximum and minimum we call the other therapeutic dose a dose that may bring the desired effect so after looking on the after looking on the different forms of drug or, or on the terminologies let's now look on the forms of drug preparation so the drugs are prepared in different forms. We have those in according to the states of matter. We have those who are in solid form. There are those in semi solid or semi liquid form, liquid form and gaseous form. So the solid form sometimes are called tablets. So these are dry compressed powder, which can be on test with small doses. So some are coated and some are uncoated. When we say coated, that is they have one additional layer. Mm, for example, those drugs with that are very bitter, so they are coated with the sugar, so that they can they have an outer layer which is sweet to encourage people to take it for especially in the pediatric for children. So the drugs that in solid form include the tablets capsule and pills and at the end of this session i will give you a quiz an assignment so that you can differentiate this by pictures you show me by pictures how tablets look how cups look and how the pills looks like so the same sold form or same liquid form so these are the drug which are another liquid no solid so they are in between they are called semi solid or semi liquid form include the element ointment and creams so most of this applied topically so you can apply on the skin we have those are in liquid forms hmm? this is a drug present in a liquid form emulsion suspension of two invisible liquid for example in the order so we have also mixture mm? mixture of liquid prepared consists of more than one drug dissolved in water or the liquid the good example here is maybe ampicrox one of the drugs is mixture of ampic and acroxacillin mm -hmm. we have also a syrup a concentration solution of sugar and water for example we have many drugs in a syrup form like maybe have a paracetamol syrup, ampicrox syrup, and more any other drugs that are in a liquid form. In a gaseous form, these are taken through inhalation, breathing in. You take the drug by breathing in. So they most of the time act on the respiratory mucosa or respiratory system. Hmm? The, the good example is oxygen. So oxygen is regarded as a drug because sometimes a person may be in need of oxygen and then oxygen is given as some medication sources of drug so drugs um, are prepared from different area or different sources mm -hmm. one of the very common one is the plants so parts of a plant are used for drug and the most can be esteem, wood, root, or grass. One of the examples of the drug is the queen, and that is delivered from plants. We have also animal sources. There are drugs that are delivered from animals. For example, we have insulin and deferrin. So they are delivered from animals. 
you have those from mineral salts, mineral salts, for example, iron, sulfate, folic acid, vitamin K. So these are minerals, and they are prepared to be drugs. We have also one of the important the synthetic sources. So, so these are the drugs that are synthesized in the pharmaceutical laboratories. For example, we have this magnesium sulfate, hydrogen peroxide, aluminium hydroxide. So these are the therapeutic agents that are prepared in the laboratories. So names of the drugs. Hmm? Drugs have different names. And we have this type four different types of them the drug and one drug can have all these four names. We have etomenas eponemas names. This is the name given to the drug. Given is the name of the founder or the person who discovered the drug. We have also chemical names or generic names. These are the names that are given. To the drug they also called the scientific names so they are given to the drug according to its chemical composition or its chemical structure so this is one of the very important type of name of drugs that you have to know because it generic name does not change it is one of the recommended name of the drug that you have to know so we have also approved names. These are the names of drugs that are approved by specific board or cancer. For example, ALU for atimethylomethantrin. So people now knows ALU. Sometimes they don't know even the long term of ALU, but it is one of the names that have been approved to be used by our medical body councils. Also, we have trade names. Trade names, these are the commercial names. So, they are commercial names given by the factories that manufacture the drugs. For example, Sherado and Panadol and Sherado or Paracetamol. It is different names of one drug, which is acetaminophen by generic. So, depending on the manufacturers, so another manufacturer give it panadol, another manufacturer give it sheradol. Another one is fancida and metakephrin or malafin. This is one drug, but the for SP, but the name differs depending on the manufacturers. So drug availability, our last part of the lecture today. So drug availability is the proportion of the administered drug which reaches the secretion. When you take a drug, not all the drugs that you take reach the secretion. When you say secretion, that leads the blood system, when the blood secretion. So the drug that reach in that secretion is what is called drug availability. This produces the anti expected therapeutic effect, and the drug that is in the secretion is the one which brings the desired effect. So, intravenous administration has a viability of 100%. So, the drug that you are given is through the intravenous line, you give it into the vein, direct into the vein. So, it has total of 100% of drug viability because it's all introduced into the system so the drug availability differ from drug to drug but the contributing factor or the factors that determine the drug administration is maybe the root of drug administration it is said that drugs that are administered oral orally mm, through the mouth or through the gi tract they have Small bioavailability. This is because of absorption. Most of the drug absorbed in the GI by the usually active transport. So some of the drug mm, in the presence absence of food in the stomach and drug interaction has it. If so, some of the drug are not absorbed. They remain in the GI tract. So also first by pass effect. Most drug after absorption 
are carried by portal cycration to the liver and only small amount are absorbed and reach into the cycration. Mm. So here also in the liver, the drug is metabolized. So some of it does not reach into the cycration. Hepatic first bypass is an as a determining factor. So drug absorbed from the GI are transported by portal cycration to the liver. So the drug may be taken up by the liver cells and metabolized and reduce. This is reduce its bioavailability. So the contributing factors for that determine the constitution of drug in the blood or drug bioavailability is the dose. The higher the dose, it has a concentration. If you take the high dose, also, the concentration in the blood will be high. The route of administration, if you take the, the drug through IV, intravenous route, so the concentration will be 100%, the viability of 100%. But if you take it through oral, some of the drug do not reach into the cycration. Also, distribution of the drug, which enters the tissue, has a low blood cost. Maybe you take the drug through the muscles, intramuscular injection. So some of the drugs remain in the tissue or in the muscles. They don't reach into the secretion. Also the rate of elimination. The faster the body breaks down the, or excretes the drug, the most rapid is the blood level falls. So that is the end today. And this is the reference books that if you have, which are you can pass through and I will share all of these slides and you can pass through but in addition you can go and check it through these references thank you if you have a question you can contact me thank you have my number and also in the e-learning platform you can ask and also through the whatsapp group thank you very much meet you on other day